What's up, you guys? This is Coop with Garage Gym Reviews. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm obviously not Coop, but Coop is the goat of Garage Gym Reviews. That is the name of his channel. So if you don't know who he is or don't know what I'm referencing, go check him out. Watching his videos was super, super helpful for us when we were building our garage gym. So again, if you don't know who he is, check out Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. I'm Andy Miller, and today I'm taking you on a tour of my garage gym. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that all of the products that we will go over today are going to be linked in the description below. As we all learned, garage gym owners were the real MVPs of 2020. We were personally attempting to put off building our home gym until we moved into this house that we built. But after gyms closed in Washington in November of 2020, we could not wait any longer. We had to get started. Obviously it is and was a privilege to be in a financial spot to where we could buy any gym equipment, let alone equipment that we planned to put in our future home gym that you see now. And that is exactly what we did. Our home gym takes up two car bays, a little bit more than that. Home or garage gyms are all about efficiency and functionality. Therefore, we held off on some of the larger single function items for the most part, though I still do want a quad and hamstring extension or curl combo. I would personally use that like at least twice per week. Today, we walk you through what I think makes the most bang for your buck garage gym decisions as far as equipment for you to start with. Remember, this is just my personal garage gym based on our training, so to each their own. Take what makes sense for you, leave the rest. For reference, we do general basic weight training, squat, deadlift, bench, overhead press, hip thrust, bro splits, not CrossFit or Metcon style for the most part. Just for some cliff notes of the equipment that we're gonna go over today, it will include stall mats for flooring, a squat rack, barbells, bumper plates, change plates, collars, a pull-up bar, bench or adjustable bench, TRX straps or rings, dumbbells or kettlebells, a pulley system for the squat rack, dip attachment, bands, uh, 20, 24, and 30 in one box, wedges, treadmill, elliptical, air bike, trap bar. Now we are going to start off with the base of the entire gym, which is your flooring. We used the horse stall mats from our local Tractor Supply Co. They were like 45-ish dollars. The four by six ones might not show up online, so I linked the four by three ones. But if you go in and ask for four by six, they likely have them. Regardless, try to find horse stall mats wherever you live. Gym flooring, specific gym flooring is likely going to be up to triple the price that you're gonna pay for a horse stall mat. Now, if Olympic lifting, I do suggest that you build some kind of wood platform. I don't have that. So I would just do a Google and find some kind of tutorial on how to build one yourself. Our floor is 21 four by six mats. You can totally cut these with an X-Acto knife. We did that in many different areas to fit around corners and poles and things like that. We used a rubber mallet and lumber, I don't know what you call them, but they're like these spikes that keep trusses together. We got them at our local Lowe's. It just helps keep the mats from shifting or separating. So underneath each of the seams that you see at the corners, we put the truss things, again, I don't know what they're called, underneath and then those stick into the mats and with the rubber mallet, we just smacked it as hard as we could a few times and it seriously keeps these mats in place so well. So if you don't have a way to secure them, make sure to check those out. Flooring was a game changer even before we got our squat rack or barbells or any of our other equipment. We lived at my mom's house at the time and she graciously allowed us to use half of her garage to create a gym space during the panorama and just having that designated space that wasn't cement garage floor made a much bigger difference in my adherence to working out than I would have ever expected. Now that you have your foundation in place with flooring, you really do need to know what you want, what type of workouts you do, and what equipment makes the most sense for that. In any home gym, again, the name of the game is gonna be efficiency and functionality, but also ease. If you are having to set up something and break it down every time that you use it, you are far less likely to use it at all. Now let's go ahead and get started with one of my favorite pieces of equipment, which is the squat rack. You have the most options when it comes to squat racks, but as mentioned, the goal for most home gyms is efficiency and use of space and function. We went with the PRX Pro, I think it is the absolute goat for home gyms. Some of the features are that it recesses back up into the wall if you wanted it to. You can see the kind of brackets here 
and at the top. We went with the dual uneven pull-up bars. This was for ease of use. When the bar is in the rack like this, I can still stand on a bench and access that top bar, which makes sense for pull-ups or things of that sort. It just really makes life a lot easier. And you can see here that we have the pulley setup as well, which would be more difficult if it was a single bar. You could still do a pulley just off of this, but this is far more functional. We never move this. We keep it here all the time. And that goes back to what I was talking about with if something can just stay in its place set up, you are much more likely to use it. So again, that's why we went with the dual uneven bar versus just a single pull-up bar. Other features that the PRX Pro comes with are the safety bars and the J-hooks. We also added the landmine attachment down at the bottom. I don't remember if it comes with that or not, as well as the dip attachment. We keep that on the wall, but it is pretty easy to attach to the sidebars if you do want to use it. For a less expensive but highly useful squat rack, we originally went with the Fringe Sport squat rack with a pull-up bar. I believe it's called the Garage Gym Series. It was only $290, and that is a steal of a deal. The added pull-up bar is money and we will talk about why that is later. Without having a squat rack, we're limited to lifting what we can power clean up to our chest and for pressing, that's no big deal. But when we want to back squat or front squat, this can be pretty cumbersome and in any sense, it's a waste of energy having to get that weight up to your body and then do whatever you're going to do with your lower body. If you're doing barbell work, I highly suggest you putting a squat rack up at the top of your list for your garage gym. As far as barbells go, we went with the Fringe Sport 15K Women's Wonder Bar and the 20K Cerakote Olympic Barbell. The Cerakote is this really pretty olive color. We consider this for the most part Nate's bar and then my bar. The barbell is the holy grail. I literally have one tattooed on my body. We cannot disrespect her and build a home gym in the absence of a barbell, in my opinion, but picking a barbell may actually be harder than you think. So some things to consider when choosing your barbell. Number one is knurling. Know if you want a center knurling or not. I prefer no center knurling, so the entire center of the bar is smooth. This can make the most sense for Olympic lifting as well. The next thing you're gonna look at is the weight of the bar as well as the diameter of the bar. A female bar is lighter and smaller in diameter, only in the shaft portion. The sleeves are standard, so most bumper plates are still going to fit on the end just fine. The next thing you're gonna look at is the spin or the whip of the bar. Traditionally, a power bar isn't gonna have much spin, if any, compared to an Olympic weightlifting bar. For an all-around bar used for bench, squats, deadlifts, and some, some Olympic movements, you're gonna want some spin. The whip of the bar is kind of like the slack or the bounce that the bar gives you. Some people like a lot of that, some people don't, some people don't even notice it. So that's totally subjective, regardless of which way you go. Two go-to bars for female lifters based on the fact that our hands are smaller on average than male hands. I prefer a 15 kg bar, which is what you see here. So that's what I'm suggesting. They are the Rogue Bella Bar or the Fringe Sport Wonder Bar, which is what I have here. This is not about the bar weighing less, but the diameter of the bar being smaller to make grip more comfortable for females. And it's a less of a limiting factor than for us. I wish more Globo Gyms honestly had 35 pound or 15 kg bars because I do think that it would make weightlifting somewhat easier and more welcoming for more women. It's important to note that you are welcome to get a standard 45 pound barbell with a larger diameter if you want. The Rogue Ohio bar, there are many to choose from, or the Fringe Sport Lone Star or Cerakote. The Lone Star is a power bar and the Cerakote is the Olympic bar for reference. Those are gonna be the winners here. For bumper plates, we went ahead and ordered from Fringe Sport. So we have two 10s, two 25s, and to 45 pounds. We actually have a lot more than that now, but due to the pandemic, bumper plates were among the toughest item to find at not a completely inflated price point, but I loathe, I hate metal plates. So it was pretty important for us to wait and find bumper plates that we liked. As far as change plates goes, those are the smaller guys that you see here. We went with Rogue for the change plates. I wanna say that this is the 37 and a half pound change plate set. You certainly don't need these. You don't have to get them. I just personally wanted the colors that Rogue offers and they are super high quality. For collars, we originally went with the Rogue aluminum collars. I much prefer clamp collars over anything else. I actually prefer a plastic outer, but these have worked great and are way more aggressive in my opinion than what we need. 
After we got these, we actually purchased the Aleco ones. I will link these down below. I forget the name of them. They're aggressive as well, but I do think that these are more functional than the Rogue aluminum ones. And these are also magnetic. So they snap onto or attach to the outside of the squat rack or anything metal that you want them to, which can just be really convenient in a gym setting. Is it just gonna echo so bad in this little corner? So sorry if it's echoey. For pull-up bars, we originally went with the squat rack with pull-up bar combo from Fringe Sport. Again, that was only $290 and it was a great deal. I said I would mention this later and here we are. A pull-up bar is huge for home gains because vertical pulling for strength training is something that is commonly missing in home gyms if you don't have access to a pull-up bar because if you don't have a pull-up bar you likely don't have a pulley system to do lat pull downs and things of that sort so a pull-up bar is a really really big deal if you are trying to build your home gym you can likely make do with a few dumbbells or kettlebells even a barbell but none of those can give you a true vertical pull Pull-up bars are also really good for grip, core, and you can do TRX work from them if you hook it to the barbell. With a pull-up bar plus bands or TRX, you now have a makeshift pulley system so you can mimic many of the lat pull-down variations, high face pulls, and isolation work like tricep extensions. But also you can snag this pulley system from Amazon for like under $60, I think. So now I'm gonna hop down and actually walk you through this pulley system and why I think it is such a must have for your home gym. When I was able to add pulley work back into my training, I really felt like I was able to fill some of those isolation work gaps. You can set this pulley system up for things like rows and other horizontal pulling. But as I said, if you have to set up or move anything, you're likely not going to use it. And I do find that it takes a lot of extra energy to remove how it is right now and set it up for those horizontal rows. So we just do things like TRX rows or bent over rows, single arm rows, things like that to get that horizontal pulling in. We use this for lat pull downs, tricep and bicep work for the most part, and we use it a lot as it is. So as you can see, we have two 45 pound plates on the peg right now. That's how you would load it. It has a central peg and you just drop on however much weight you want. We typically just keep it loaded as is and do not move anything, even if we're using the squat rack for something else. I honestly don't remember if the pulley system came with all of these attachments and the lat pull down bar, but we ended up with all of them. I'll make sure they're all linked down below for you. But this is the neutral grip for lat pull downs, the standard bar for pull downs, and then this is the rope, which we use for either straight arm lat pull down variations or tricep and bicep work. This is an adjustable bench. We got the Rogue AB3. It's expensive straight up. A flat bench, even a different adjustable bench is going to be cheaper for sure. So if you're on a tight budget, go with that. But if you can swing it, an adjustable bench just opens up so many doors for variety in your movement and exercise selection. Now, any bench can be used for more than just bench press. Think Bulgarian split squats, hip thrusts, step ups, seated pressing, so on and so forth. With the adjustable piece, we can now access things like incline and decline, back supported upright work, as well as core work. You're going to pay a pretty penny for that upgrade, but if you're buying a bench, I do really suggest an adjustable bench, again, if you can swing it. We also added the leg attachment as well. That's an option that you have. You can do Nordic curls in this setting here or you can incline this piece and then you can hook your legs into the top and do decline core work as well. The next thing that I suggest you have for a home gym, this is definitely not essential, but I enjoy having it, so I'm putting it in the video, is a box. I would suggest getting a 20 by 24 by 30 box. These are most common. You can get them in wood form or literally build one yourself. I have many friends that have done that. This one is a firm foam. It's from Rep Fitness, and I have loved having it so far. I use it for different step-up variations, high box step-ups, low box step-ups, things like obviously box jumps and other plyometric work. So if you would like doing that work, then I highly suggest having this in addition to only having a bench. This is the Aleco Open Bar Gen 1. I don't know if that's actually how you say it, 
but it makes sense considering its shape. This is essentially an open trap bar. Trap bars are also called hex bars because of their shape. They can be a really, really good in between for squats and deadlifts. You can use them for deadlift and Romanian deadlift variations as well as farmer carries. I personally love the trap bar and it's a must for me, but they are certainly not an essential piece in a home gym. Your standard barbell is going to be much more versatile than any trap bar. Next up is either going to be TRX straps or rings. Unless you have a cable system, you are pretty limited when it comes to accessory work in terms of horizontal pulling. TRX almost takes no space and opens opportunity for rows, single arm work, assisted lower body work, and more. They're one of the most versatile pieces that you can add to your home gym. I prefer rings to TRX, so that is why we went with the wooden rings from Rogue. You could totally have these hanging from any bar, so a pull-up bar on the squat rack would work. We decided to actually mount them to the ceiling because we have the space to do that in our home gym. But whether you get TRX or rings, you will likely put them in your squat rack. For a kettlebell or dumbbell set, we only had these two kettlebells at first for almost a year in combination with the barbells and the plates. It honestly made for a pretty good setup. We then invested in a five through 50 pound dumbbell set from Rep Fitness along with their rack for storage when they had a sale. Much like the pulley system, having a full dumbbell set just allowed for more specificity with training. And I prefer having a full set to power blocks, but power blocks do make for a great choice in saving space for home gyms. If you do want to get dumbbells for your home gym, I suggest going through either Fringe, Rep Fitness, or Rogue. Moving on to bands for pull-up and accessory work, we got one purple one, orange one, red one, light orange one. These are all from Fringe Sport based on the resistance and assistance that Nate and I both needed. So I'm sure that you could get a set that has all of their assistance, but we just ordered individual bands for what we think we needed. Bands are just a great addition to any home gym. They're super versatile and can be added to bars or kettlebells or used with body weight for added resistance or assistance. This is a, you could call it a booty band. It's just a smaller band. I've literally had this for so many years that the brand is not on it and it used to be. So I don't know the brand, but I do have some linked in the description below and on my Amazon page. Before we get into cardio machines, I want to talk about these wedges and why I think they are a hidden gem in a home gym. So I use these stacked like so for any front foot elevated work or anytime I need a small step and they are money for any heel elevated work like a cyclist squat or Bulgarian split squat with your heel elevated. If you've never used wedges before, they're space efficient and give you more options in a home gym for exercise variation. Be sure to check these out if you have never considered having wedges in your home gym before. We're going to start off the cardio machines with what I think might be the most well-known piece of equipment, which is a treadmill. For me, after sitting most of the day, it's really nice to move in an upright position for cardio. Last year, mainly for pregnancy and postpartum, we added the Soul F80 treadmill. I now use this piece of cardio equipment more than the other two that we're going to go over. I prefer walking on a steep incline to most forms of cardio, mainly because I stack work tasks, so drafting podcasts, YouTube scripts, Instagram captions, etc., while I'm walking on the treadmill. Okay, are we ready? Is this, is this light? Is this too glowy? Am I glowing? Is this gonna be an issue? If the light is an issue, we're just gonna roll with it. So before moving on to the bike, I just wanted to say that cardio machines are not a necessity, but can be very helpful for warming up and of course conditioning or doing circuits in addition to your strength training. We got the Rogue Echo Bike back in May 2020 and I have loved having it much more than I thought I would. We also have the Bowflex 216 elliptical, which I hate and don't use because Nothing to do with the machine. I just hate ellipticals. We mostly got this for Nathaniel. I will say that if you do want an elliptical, this one does perform well for a reasonable price. Just be sure to choose your cardio equipment based on your likes and needs, plus your space and availability. Now I want to talk about heating or cooling your gym. If you've made it this far, you get to hear about arguably the best part of our garage gym, which is Harriet the heater. If you're wondering why she's not here, it's because I'm filming this in the summertime. So she is actually stowed away in our storage unit. So if you live in a year round warm climate, good for you. <laughs> While the Pacific Northwest is pretty temperate, we did insulate our garage that you see here. 30 degree weather is not the most motivating 
to start lifting in. Thus, we purchased a master heater from our local Tractor Supply Co. and named her Harriet after a Harrier jet because she literally spits fire. We do crack a window to minimize fumes because she runs on kerosene, but it literally only takes two to five minutes to warm up the entire garage. And most importantly, it lowers that barrier to entry. The more comfortable that you can make your training space, the more likely you are to use it. Next up, I wanna talk about a garage gym fan. You could obviously have an AC unit as well, but we just got this fan from our local Lowe's store and it is simply a Utilitech fan. We looked at big ass fans, but that just isn't needed for our training space. Again, the fan, like the heater, just makes training less uncomfortable due to climate. Other gym accessories that you might consider are a hip thrusting pad, mini bands, yoga mat, whatever else you might need for your preferred style of training. If you're wondering why this mat is freaking huge, it's because it's for my husband who is massive. And now for a bonus piece of equipment. So this big daddy is the Rogue Donkey. Let me be so clear, this is like very unessential for a home gym. It is freaking huge, it's heavy. Once you put it down, you're not moving it. Make no mistake, this was terrible to move from our last rental into our house build but it is also one of my personal favorite pieces of equipment so if you do want to do things like ghd or reverse hypers this is one of the best pieces of equipment that you can buy to do those things just note that it is huge and it is not efficient and it is not very multifunctional so like i said ghd and reverse hypers are going to be most of what you're going to do on this machine that wraps up our home garage gym build out. If I am being real with you, this video took like over six hours to create. So if you can just smash all of the possible buttons, that would be very helpful. I wish you all of the happy lifting, whether you are back in the gym or you are assembling your home gym. Gains be with you and I will catch you guys in the next one.